Um, one of the things that Hamilton, uh, Hamilton's uh, you know, dead by 1811. Uh, one of the things that Hamilton, though, says in his charter of the First Bank is that one of the things that the First Bank is going to do is it's going to build us a political base in Europe among the bondholders. Those people who are going to get paid off by the bank are going to support us because they're going to want the US to succeed. The First Bank of the United States initially is converting all of that com complicated and clumsy notes that are issued by provisioners and things like that into bonds, which are then are issuing in Europe. But by around 1800, more than half of what the bank First Bank of the United States is doing is effectively funding smuggling and piracy. Uh, not, not piracy, but smuggling. And this is a kind of less well understood part of what the First Bank of the United States is doing. And it really puts the US back in an international context. Napoleonic conflicts um, are uh, simmering. The, uh, the Continental Plan, Napoleon's Continental Plan, is preventing um, the, the co continent from trading uh, outside. Britain is embargoing all the ports and trying to block trade. And so what the US is doing, and, these, and US merchants who are funded by the Bank of the United States, is um, they're picking up uh, um, sugar from Spanish colonies. They're touching New England and then uh, pretending that they're exporting it, and then they're shipping it back out to Spain. They're, touch, they're going to French colonies, French sugar colonies, picking up sugar, touching ports in New England, and then uh, ship. And so they're basically, according to James Stephen and, uh, Stephen and others, uh, practicing a war in disguise. The US is technically not involved in this conflict, but it's smuggling for both sides. It's smuggling in goods under the embargoes of both. Uh, both the, um, the British embargo on uh, trade with Napoleon's, uh, Napoleonic Empire's trade with its colonies and uh, smuggling in the, in the Continental Plan. And so that problem is not a serious problem. Hamilton's right, ultimately. Uh, European merchants, British merchants in particular, are really ticked off at this. In 1801, um, the US, the United States, this tiny little th thing on the coast, is shipping almost as much, as many goods as all the British merchant marine in 1801. So it's, it's effectively grown, grown into a sea power largely through the First Bank of the United States. Um, but once the, once the bonds are all paid off, there are now no one, there's no one in Britain or in, in Europe to side with the US, right? There's no, there's no benefit now that's passing to uh, Europeans. And this is part of the genesis then of the War of 1812. We tend to talk about the War of 1812 as beginning as a, as a conflict in which you know, sailors are being pulled off onto ships and, uh, um, and, and drafted into the British Navy. But for Britain, the crucial issue is US smuggling funded by um, this, this First Bank of the United States. And the War of 1812, in some sense, is a consequence of the collapse of the First Bank of the United States. In some ways, it's the first um, shot fire when the Democratic Republicans finally finish off the bank, there's effectively no su support among bondholders for the sort of fledgling US, particularly in Britain. And that's crucial, I think, for understanding why Canning and others ultimately do not, um, are not willing to put up with uh, the smuggling anymore. <laughs>